Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we're going to begin the funeral service for Blossom Skolnick. We invite everybody to take a moment to be sure your cell phones have been turned off, not to disturb the sacred funeral ceremony. Rabbi Deborah Newman Kamen from Am Yisrael Conservative Congregation will be officiating. We welcome those of you who are joining us via live stream, and you do not have to worry about your cell phones because it's live stream. Come this way. In this time of sorrow, we turn to the words of our tradition and begin our service with Psalm 23. Mizmor le David, Adonai roi velo exar, bin odesha yarbitseni, alme menuchot yinachaleni. Nafshi yeshoveb, yancheni bemad like sedek laman shamo, gam kielech begets al mavet, loi ra ra, kieta imadi. Shivtecha umishantecha chema yinachamuni, ta'aroch livne neged shulchan neged sarai, deshanta vishemen roshi kosi rivaya, akto vechesed yardafuni kol yame chayai, vishapti bevet adonai lo orach yamim. God is my shepherd, I shall not want. God has me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside the still waters, guides me on paths of righteousness and revives my soul for the sake of glory. Though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no harm, for you are with me. Your staff and your rod do comfort me. You set a table in sight of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall abide in the house of God forever. now want to read what we know uh, from Proverbs in our tradition as a prayer or a poem that's called Eshet Chayel. And while it's over 2,000 years old, you'll see that it very accurately describes so many of the characteristics that Blossom had. Eshet Chayel mi yimsa, v'rachok mi fetim yichra, v'tach balav ba'ala v'shalala yachzar, a woman of valor, who can find, for her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and nothing shall he lack. She renders him good and not evil all the days of her life. She opens her hands to the needy and extends her hands to the poor. She is robed in strength and dignity and fit cheerfully faces whatever may come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, her tongue guided by kindness, she tends to the affairs of her household and eats not the bread of idleness. Her children come forward and bless her, her husband too, and praises her. Many women have done superbly, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a God-revering woman is much to be praised. Place before her the fruit of her hands. Wherever people gather, her deeds speak her praise. Blossom was born in Chicago, January 5th, 1938, living with her family and her extended family. She had an older brother who died at a young age, and yet when Blossom described her childhood, she said, I had a very happy childhood because I was loved. And when I met with the family yesterday, they described Blossom's childhood and she was indeed surrounded by love. She was beloved by her parents, and she was a loving daughter. She had many first cousins, but also was surrounded by a large and boisterous Potankin family. Blossom lived in a six flat, grandparents, cousins surrounding her. The family had weekly gatherings in Jackson Park where the women fried latkes and the men played pinochle and the children rolled down the hill. Her sixth flat also played a part in her romantic life because one day, Zan, who was to become her husband, was looking for a friend but knocked on the wrong door. Blossoms, it was Blossom's apartment and the rest, as they say, is history. They waited to get married 
because Zan wanted her to finish her degree. They married in 1959 and soon after had their beloved children, Elise, who married Marty, Gary, who married Kate, and Linda, who married Richard. When I asked them to describe Blossom, they said, our mother was loving and dedicated to our family. For her, family always came first. This included us and our dad, but it also included her extended family. They gathered monthly with the Cousins Club, and twice a year, the children got to attend. One of those times was Hanukkah, and each tanta, each aunt, would make 20 pounds of latkes. And Blossom, even though she was not known for her voice, would boisterously lead all of the singing. Early in their marriage, Zan and Blossom spent several years living in Springfield, and she had to learn how to drive. In later years, when it was time to teach her children, she would say to them, remember, a car is a weapon. Blossom was a person who was very reliable and organized. Dinner was always at six. She kept a very tidy, kosher home. She was a good listener and gave helpful advice. She was the anchor in the family. Her husband, Zan, was fun-loving and they spent their marriage laughing and laughing together. Blossom was always focused on others. She selflessly cared for everyone, her children and her husband. He, she cared and loved him for their entire marriage, but when he grew ill, she continued to tirelessly care for him. And when her mother developed Alzheimer's, she cared for her as well, visiting her every day. And fa other family members that needed help she was always there for them. Blossom had a wide group of friends. She always had her blondies and her crinkle cookies in the freezer for when her friends came by, which was almost daily. Her house was the hangout place for her children's friends. Blossom was the kind of person that never had rifts with friends or drama in her friendships or with her family members because she lived by the motto if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. No one, no one ever heard her say anything negative about another person. She taught her children the importance of being Jewish and the importance of being American, both of which were deeply important to her. Her sons and daughter-in-law, Martin, Kate, and Richard, all agreed how lucky they were, ha lucky that they were to have Zan and Blossom as parents-in-law. As Marty described, I was very lucky in my in-laws. They were different from my parents and I appreciated that. Zan and Blossom became very good friends with all their machatanam, their, the parents of their um, children-in-law. Blossom took pride in all of her children's success, but that was magnified when she became a grandmother to Henry, Ruth, Ari, Max, and Leah. It was a role that she was meant for. Um, they, the family told me she was a baby whisperer and loved, of course, her grandchildren, but really never met a baby that she didn't love. She had a way about her that quietly let them come to her, and all of her grandchildren, I'm told, adored her. The out-of-town grandchildren were blessed by continual visits, and Henry, being local, got to spend a lot of time with them and Marty and Elise got a lot of babysitting out of that. Henry loved it because she was, treated him like a king, as I'm sure she did, kings and queens, to all of you. But she was also the, the bonus bubby to many others. Blossom loved clothes, and as a bubby, loved buying her granddaughter's clothes as well. Blossom liked crafts and learned a lot of them over her lifetime but her lifelong love was flowers. She loved gardening and learned flower arranging. Near the very end of the conversation, we did come to talk about Blossom's work life. She worked for many years and she particularly liked her last job, but we talked very little about her professional life because as you can imagine, the focus of the conversation was about her first love and her first commitment, which of course was her family. I would like to end 
by sharing some memories of Blossom that were shared to me by Becky and Eve on behalf of their mother, Sharon. Sharon and her sister, Evelyn, were first cousins that lived in the building when they were growing up together, and they were more like sisters than first cousins. And this is what Sharon's daughters wrote. She was blessed to be part of a large, tight-knit immigrant family who all grew up together. Blossom and Sharon shared an incredibly close bond throughout their lives. Though technically first cousins, they always referred to each other as sisters, along with Sharon's older sister. Blossom was an, it was an intellectual and pursued many artistic and creative interests. Sharon and Blossom attended many cultural events and lectures together that always sparked lively discussions and good laughs between them. Blossom had a deeply Jewish neshama, a deeply um, Jewish soul, and hosted beautiful and meaningful holiday meals, which always included her famous chocolate crinkle cookies and Harvey Wallbanger cake. No one ever left hungry, physic left hungry physically or spiritually from Blossom's table. The hours that these women spent kibitzing on the phone are legendary. Blossom always had time for everyone. A kind word, an understanding glance, a contagious laugh were always at the ready for her family and friends. The truth is, they just don't make them like that anymore. We are so blessed to have called her our own. Thank you, Becky and Eve. In our tradition, we say Adonai Natan, but Adonai Lakach, God has given and God has taken away. I know the last few years with Blossom's illness has been very difficult on your family. We hope that over time, these memories that you shared today will become in the forefront of your mind and some of the less pleasant memories will fade. God gives and God takes away, but all of those blessed memories are your inheritance. I ask you now to please rise for the Almalay Rachamim. Almalay Rachamim, Shochein Bamiromim, Hamitse Menucha Nechona Kanfet Hashachina, Bemalot Kidushima Taharim Kazahir Kirihia Mizhirim, Et Nishmat Bluma Rezel Batnatan Valea, Shalchala Olama. Began Aden de Haman Uchata, Anna Baal Harachamim, Hesti Reher, Besetter Kenafechala Olamim, Utswar Betsora Chaim et Nishmata, Adonai Hunachlata, Vetanuch Beshalom, Amishkava, Venomar, Amen. O God, exalted and full of compassion, grant peace in your sheltering presence among the holy and pure to the soul of Bluma Razel Batnatan Valea, who has gone to her eternal home. God of mercy, we beseech you, remember all the worthy and righteous deeds that she performed in the land of the living. May her soul be bound up in the bound of life. God is her portion. May she rest in peace. And let us all say, Amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the interment service will continue at Shalom Memorial Park Cemetery, located at 1700 West Rand Road in Arlington Heights. The family will be at the Tisch residence at 2331st Street in Glenview, following the interment till 9 p.m. Wednesday and Thursday from 5.30 to 9 p.m. The Shiva coordinator will be Beth Hafter. Memorial contributions to JUF or the Alzheimer's Association would be appreciated. And for those of you who are joining us online, all that information can be found on the website. For those of you who will be driving in the funeral procession to the cemetery, the procession will be forming in our parking lot. Please obtain an orange safety funeral sticker to place on the right-hand side of your windshield. Have your bright lights and hazard lights on at all times. For additional measures of safety, we'll have a car in the back of the procession to hopefully keep other cars from entering the procession. Use your horn liberally as you're going through the intersections. And please do not speak or text on your cellular phone while driving to a cemetery. This time I invite everyone to please rise and stand in place as the pallbearers come forward and as we escort the casket of Blossom Skolnick along with her family and Rabbi Deborah Newman Kamen from the chapel, then you may return to your cars.